If you watched my last video, you'll know that I recently picked up a single speed mountain bike that I planned on using for training in the winter. Originally, I thought this bike was just going to be a beat up old junker bike that I'd throw some heavy tires on and just use for training, but I actually ended up getting something a lot nicer than what I bargained for. This is a Niner 1-9 with stands, arch wheels with American Classic hubs, a White Brothers rigid carbon fork, and a pair of Renthal carbon bars. Needless to say, this is a pretty badass bike. And so the excitement to ride it grew more and more as I looked over the bike and got it set up for my height. The only thing that I've changed so far on this bike is the tires. Hutchison Tires actually had a buy one get one free deal going on for the Toro tire, so I bought a pair and slapped them on to give it a rugged, big, and aggressive set of tires. Rolling resistance be damned. I need to change the stem on it, as it's way too long for me and my short arms, and it needs new brake pads, but I really couldn't resist taking it out for a couple rides. I've had the bike out on about four rides now, and I gotta say that riding a single speed is almost completely different from what regular mountain biking is, and I'll get more into that in a minute. I decided to take my camera on the first couple of rides because I really wanted to capture the first experiences that I had with the bike. This was the first time that I had ever ridden a single speed, and the first time that I would ever ridden a full rigid mountain bike. The gearing that I have is a 32 tooth front chain ring and a 20 tooth rear cog. On the downhills I felt as though I needed a smaller cog for more speed, and on the uphills I felt like I needed a bigger cog for easier climbing. So I guess that means it's perfect. The rides that I went on were no easy strolls through some flat and flowy single track. This is Moorhead, Kentucky, and the hills here aren't ones to scoff at. The first ride I went on started with a 6-7% one mile pavement climb to get onto a connector trail. I was curious how it would climb up something like this, and I was eager to test that out once I got past all the stoplights. To my surprise, it handled the climb well. I was out of the saddle a lot to crank the pedals, but the rigid fork helped distribute the power to my crank and wheels, as opposed to it sucking it up and slowing me down like a suspension fork. After the pavement climb, there's another climb, and we call this the Pretty Ridge Kicker. It's a solid 13% and is the last attack from the climb to try to get you to submit. Again, I was out of the saddle for most of it, with a cadence of probably 40 to 50 RPM. It definitely wasn't easy, but doing it made me feel like a beast. Then it was a rolling road to the gravel that would take me on to the single track. For the first video, I decided to wear a chest mount because I wanted to capture and show the rigidity and roughness I was experiencing as best as I could. As I said before, I'd never ridden full rigid before, and I wanted to capture what that was like. The footage is shaky, but trust me, it's the best I could do. The main reason that I wanted a single speed, like I said before, was for the training. I'm a smaller guy, so my power output isn't as high as some other mountain bikers that I've ridden with or raced against. Riding single speed will help teach me and train me to push a harder gear and rely more on momentum and less on cadence. And I got to experience what that was like. It is so different than riding a bike with gears.
Due to the simplicity of a single speed, while you're pedaling along you're able to think more about your lines, your braking, cornering, and the more technical aspects of riding. I don't have to think or worry about being in the right gear, if my cadence is too high or low, or if I'm spending too much energy pedal pushing. I'm completely focused on getting where I want to go, as it takes a pretty solid effort to do any of the climbs around here on this bike. We have made it to the first witch. It's gonna be either a blast or it's gonna suck. I don't think there's really an in-between. Going downhill wasn't as much as a treat as it is on my Hardtail Scott or my Full Suspension Niner, as it's a rough ride where you have to be strategic and pick the best lines to give you the best results. Going down the best downhill in the area, you can see that my camera wasn't even able to capture what was going on because I was getting thrown around and bounced around so much. I was at the mercy of the trail. But this concluded my first ride on a single speed, and I gotta say I was pretty hooked. The simplicity of it, and also the difficulty of it, was something that, honestly, I was really looking forward to, and I was excited to get back out on more trails. Eager to ride more single track, the next ride that I went on, my dad tagged along. This was going to be a true test of my abilities on a single speed. Sure, the first ride had some climbs, some rollers, rock gardens, some technical descents, 
all of that. But this ride is a true test. This is the trail system behind Eagle Lake. Oh, you don't see it? So yeah, that's a pretty good summary for this trail. They're hard to see, hard to ride, and very hard to conquer. Right out of the gate, you have this sketchy drop down into a dried up creek bed, which then shoots straight left to send you up a 20 to 25% single track climb, according to Strava. It's very short, but it is very steep. With my geared bikes, I've only made this climb about three or four times, my dad attempts it wholeheartedly here, but without a run or any ability to garner some speed before the climb, it makes it very difficult. I got on the saddle prepared to sprint as hard as I could, and got about a tenth of the way up. It wasn't exactly the best start, but oh well. <laughs> After the climb, you go down what most would describe as a goat path with a huge drop off to the left. Then you have to walk across another creek, and you're rewarded with yet another climb. Less steep, this one averages around 8 to 10 percent grade for about 0.8 miles or so. With rutted out lines, rocks, and debris everywhere, this isn't exactly a walk in the park either. Keep in mind we're less than a mile into this ride. We got ourselves to the top of the climb and I was already feeling it in my legs. I knew it was going to be a long day, but this loop is only about 8 to 9 miles. Surprisingly, you're actually given a quick breather at the top of the ridge. Just a flat section where you can spin and work up some speed, and trust me, you need it. What's coming is something I like to call the staircase. It's three consecutive climbs, each flattening out just for a second before the next. These climbs are a generous 20% grade each, and about 0.3 to 0.5 miles, each with loose rocks and sand, so traction is almost non-existent. The last climb is nearly impossible, with only one guy that can climb it, and he's a professional mountain biker. I was honestly surprised that I could make it up the first two, given my gear ratio.
And I know that the word climb or climbing or this climb or whatever is getting redundant, but that's this trail system. You hike your bike up the last climb after bursting your heart and lungs on the first two. Then you go down a technical, loose, steep descent to go right back up another 20% grade kicker. This happens not once, not twice, but five more times on this loop. It's no joke. But my dad and I were determined to get through it and enjoy the ride. I only made one of these climbs on the single speed. The gearing just didn't allow me to turn the pedals, I would lose traction, and then have to hop off. Dad made more than that, and I was very envious of his geared bike. But the climbing lessons later on in the ride, and you're treated to some flowy double track and gravel road. Something I would like to mention is how much I enjoy the bike on this type of terrain. I love the rigid fork when going along the gravel road. It allows me to put power down and not bob up and down when out of the saddle. Plus, the scenery up here is really nice, so it's really not that bad. The last obstacle of the day comes on the Martins Branch Descent. This descent is also no joke. If you haven't caught on yet, this entire loop is pretty treacherous and difficult. There's a few rolling climbs before we start going downhill, and there's also a pretty big tree to cross. On the way down, there are three very tight, very technical switchbacks. 
I was curious how this bike would handle them as it takes quite a bit of finesse on my other bikes, one being a 27.5 and the other being a 29er like this single speed, and I wasn't sure how the rigid fork and the stem that's about 12 feet too long would handle it. To my surprise, it handled it almost perfectly, and I was able to make each of the switchbacks. You can hear my excitement as it's a pretty big deal for me. The camera doesn't really do these switchbacks justice because the technical grade and the sharpness is just mind-boggling. But it was quite exciting. Oh my god, I made it! <laughs> Holy crap! Once we got to the bottom of the descent, we were able to just hop back onto the road and spin back to the bike shop where we started the ride. Honestly, riding this bike was an absolute blast. It's such a different experience and almost a completely different mindset than riding a normal mountain bike. I really enjoyed it and I know that this winter is going to be very fun while training because I get to experience most of it on this bike. I hope you enjoyed the video, ride free and safe, and thank you for watching.